so for some applications if you needed some tools then you could just go ahead and click the application package which you want to install and just simply click on ok and that is going to install some packages for you now one of the most important thing about your android application is that you have two main things or the two major things in your android app the first is your layout which is nothing but the design which uh, which is just like the front end or the front facing things of your android application that is nothing but the text box the screen the activity and all those things and then if you want to write the logic for your android application then we move on to this main activity dot java file so if you click on it you could see the java code which we have right over here so this basically has the code which we are going to write so you could switch in between these two things so if you want to go on to the content main dot xml you could click on this and in order to go to the main activity you click on this button right here so it allows you to switch between the two as and when you require so before jumping right into the code these are the few basic things which we need to cover so as to make our android learning experience much more better and that is because we need to understand these things before starting with the code and that is because we are going to need these things when we start writing our code so in this tutorial we have learnt about the interface of the android ide or the android studio ide and we have gone through the various things like the project tab and this tab which contains some things which we could directly drag and drop we have also learned that we could design android applications in two ways that is we could design the layout of the application in two ways the first is we could just drag things and drop or drop them directly onto the screen and another way is we could just simply go ahead and write the code into the xml so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to learn about some android studio tips and how they could be useful for you when we start writing code so in the previous tutorial we have gone through the interface of the android studio ide and in this tutorial we are going to discuss some tips which are going to prove helpful for you so that you could program more efficiently so the first thing which i need to discuss with you is that there are a number of shortcut keys available for you so as to use the android studio ide so if you want to know all the shortcuts for this you could simply go on help and you could click on default key map preferences so if you click on it you are going to get a list of all the possible shortcut keys which we are going to require to use the android studio id more efficiently so what i recommend is that you just simply print out this thing and you could just use them when you are developing the android applications now in these tutorials i am not going to be using this shortcut keys and that is because if i'll be using the shortcut keys then it would be difficult for you to recognize what i have done so this key map preferences are usually available in a pdf format so you could easily print them out and you could just have the copy all the times with you so as to increase your productivity and efficiency while writing the code so make sure that you print it out and always have a copy with you now one more thing which i wanted to mention is that you could also change the theme for your android studio application so for example if you want a darker theme for the layout of the android studio ide then you could change it so now in order to change it just simply go on file then go to settings and in the settings under the appearance and behavior you simply click the appearance option and it is going to display the theme for you now there are three themes available the current theme which you are using is IntelliJ and I recommend the IntelliJ theme and that is because it is a more lighter theme now if you have uh, if you want a darker theme then Darkula is a theme which you could use and the windows theme is much more basic as compared to the IntelliJ so depending upon your preference you could select the theme so for example if you want a theme in which you have a darker background so you could use the darkula but i am going to stay with intellij as it is more clear and easy to understand so once you have finished selecting your theme you could just click on apply and you could click ok so your selected theme should be loaded up by the android ide by now now one more thing which i wanted to mention is that when you go into the main activity.java file you'll see that we have some java code right over here now the thing is that if we encounter some error over here then it is going to display us the error in this console window right over here now it is also going to specify the line number on which we have error so it is important for us to just kind of check which on which line we have encountered an error but the thing is that we don't have the line numbers over here so if you want to display line numbers over here in this gutter you simply right click on it 
and click on show line numbers and it is going to show the line numbers for you so that it becomes easier for you in order to keep track of your code and you could easily debug your code and you could just point out where your error lies so it is especially important if you encounter an error you could just go on to this console and you could check the line number on which you have encountered an error and then you could modify your error and then just go ahead and run your program so that was the thing about the line numbers so make sure that you have line numbers enabled on your android studio now one more thing with this is that it has an option which is called as the code folding so for example we have this import right here and it is going to automatically fold up all the imports into one thing and it is go not going to show the entire imports so only if you unclick this it is going to show you all the imports now in order to avoid confusion we want to turn it off so we want to turn off the code folding so in order to turn off the code folding we simply go on file click settings then we click this editor option and inside the editor we have an option which is called as code folding so we select the code folding option and we simply uncheck all these checkboxes so it is not going to fold any of the code for us and we are going to get a clear view of the code which we have written so make sure that you uncheck all of those things and click on apply and click on ok so as you could see it is no longer folding our code. So that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be learning how you could create your own AVD which is nothing but the Android virtual device. So for example if you want to set up your new Android virtual device so as to test out your application onto some new phone. So we are going to learn that how you could do that and in the next to next tutorial we are going to learn how you could actually edit and write code for the Android. So the reason I am discussing all these things before directly jumping into the code is that we need to understand these things as we are going to need them in the future and it would be confusing for you if I explain you to them afterwards. So I thought it would be better for me to cover it right now so that in the upcoming tutorials it would be easy for you to just apply them. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we will be learning how we could create our own AVD which is Android virtual device. So in order to create your own AVD or Android virtual device you just simply go on this icon which is nothing but the AVD manager which manages all of your Android virtual device. So we simply click on it and as you could see we have two virtual devices with us right now. Now the first device is nothing but the copy of Nexus which I've already created and the next device is the Nexus 5. Now in this tutorial we are going to create a new device and in order to create a new device what we are going to do is that instead of just editing one of these devices we are going to create a copy of one of these device so so in order to create a new device you simply go on create virtual device and in this we are going to select some device so let's say we want let's use Nexus 5 because it suits our requirement so we select this option right over here now you could select any of the devices right over here but for the purpose of this tutorials I'm going to go with Nexus 5 and instead of just clicking on next I'm going to click on this clone device button and that is because it is going to clone the device for us so that we don't mess up with the settings of the original device. So for example the original device has a RAM of 1.5 GB but the thing is that we have allocated the maximum RAM size to be 1024 MB. So the thing is that we want to modify this so in order to do that we simply go ahead here and we just make it a thousand MB so that is going to allocate a thousand MB or 1 GB of RAM for us now 1 GB is exactly 1024 so we are going to go with slightly less or approximately equal number and that is because we have only allocated a space or size of just 1 GB to our AVD now once this is set we go ahead and click on OK then click next and we also want to select the Android version so now we are going to select the latest version of Android which is marshmallow so we click next and now we want to name our device uh, let's say we give, we create a new device and let's name it as my android so this is our new device then we simply click finish now as you could see we have successfully created our own device which is called as my android and it has 650 mb of memory now in order to launch this avd and emulator we click this button so it is going to start the emulator for us and we could see our device up and running So if you create a new AVD it is going to take up some time and that is because it has to just duplicate the running of the Nexus 5 device from scratch. So as you could see our emulator has started and our phone is booting up. 
so as you could see this is the name of our device which is my android now if you want this emulator to run a bit faster then the thing which you could do is that you could allocate more memory to this device so for example if you have a ram of 8 gb then you could easily allocate a ram of 2 gb to this emulator so that it could boot up faster as compared to just giving it a ram of 650 mb or 1 gb now as you could see our device has started and our device itself is going to take a bit longer to boot up and as you could see we our device has booted up and as we have created this device from scratch it is going to basically emulate a, like starting a new phone when you buy a new phone it is going to behave as if you have bought a new phone so we just unlock it and as you could see it is going to welcome us and this phone is pretty much like your basic android phone where you wherein you could have a set of applications now the interesting thing about this phone is that you could even use the browser to serve the internet so for example if you open up the browser and if you want to go to google it is going to load up google for you and you could pretty much use this browser uh, as you use it in the phone so if you want to search something you could just go ahead and search anything so for example if you want to search android studio it is going to show you the results with android studio and you could use it like your basic phone so basically this is how you create your own android virtual device by using the android avd manager and the main purpose of learning this is because when you uh, develop your own application so you want your application to be tested on each and every device so as to make sure that your application runs smoothly on every device so that's why you create a basic virtual device so that you could test your app onto it. So that's it for this tutorial and I hope you guys understood how you could use the Android AVD in order to create your own Android virtual device such as this phone which we have created which is my Android and you could pretty much also allocate some memory or the RAM to it so as to make it run more faster. So make sure that you choose a proper RAM depending upon your configuration. So for example if you have a 4 gb GB of RAM could allocate 1 GB to the emulator. Now if you have a higher RAM like 8 GB or 16 GB then you could go with 2, 3 or 4 gigs of RAM. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be going through the basic overview of an Android application. So in the previous tutorials we have successfully created this application right in front of us and we were successful in launching this app onto the emulator. Now in this tutorial we are going to go in a little bit of depth for understanding what an Android application is and how it works. So in order to understand Android apps better, uh, you could take an example of a website. A website is nothing but it is a collection of a number of web pages which are linked to each other. For example, if you have a website and on the home page of a website we have links to multiple pages of the website. So basically a website is nothing but a collection of web pages linked to each other. Now in the case of Android application, instead of web pages, we have these things which are called as activity. And an activity is nothing but the screen which is appearing in front of us right now is called as a single activity. Now if there is a button on this application, so if we click that button and we go onto a new page, that page is called as a new activity. So an activity in an Android app is similar to a web page of a website. So in an Android application, we could have as many number of activities as we want and an activity is nothing but the screen which appears in front of us. So that was a basic explanation of what Android activities are and how they can be used. Now the next thing which we need to study is that the activity consists of two parts. The first part of an activity is nothing but the design which appears in front of us. So as we could see the design of an activity uh, consists of the user interface which has these text boxes, the text, the buttons, the status bar and all that. So this thing is nothing but the design or the overall appearance of the application, how the application appears to the user. So this is the first part of an activity. And the next part of an activity is called as the brains of the activity or the logic of the activity. So the logic of the activity or the brains of activity are nothing but the code which is used to compile the data which we have on this activity. Now in order to find the brain of this activity right here, you just simply click on app, click on Java and you could have this file right here which is called as the main activity dot Java file. Now if you click on it, you will get an idea of what the actual brains of the activity looks like. So this is basically the logic which stands behind the activity. 
So in this case, we have the front end of our activity, which is nothing but how the activity looks to the end user. And on the back side, we have this code, which usually instructs the activity to perform in a certain way, or it is also used to process the data, which we are going to enter into the activity. Now let's go ahead and let's design some things onto our main activity. So let's go ahead and delete this hello world. So in order to delete it, I simply click on it and then right click and click on delete. So as you could see, our activity turns blank. And now let's say if you want to add something to it, let's say we want to add a text area to it. You could go ahead right here and select this plain text view, which allows you to enter some text onto the screen or the activity. Now it is also going to show you some grid lines, which are used to align your text properly. So let's say if you want to place this text area or the plain text view in the middle of the screen, you could go right here and just click on it so that you are sure that it is in the middle of the screen. So now just leave it and you'll have your text area right over here. Now, as you could see, it is displaying the text to be new text. Now, let's say you want to change the text of this text area or the plain text view right here. Then in order to do so, you simply click on it or instead of clicking right here, you could go to the component tree, which is shown right here. And in the component tree, you could select your text view, which is nothing but this and you simply click on it. And as you could see, there are a certain number of properties of the text view listed over here. Now we could go here and we could change the content of the text view. So as you could see this property, which is named as text could be changed. So if you want to change the text of this field, you simply click on this area. And instead of this, you could type my application so now when we click on this we'll get the text as my application now in order to add this my application it can be done in two ways so for example if you want to edit the interface of your android application or the activity you could do it in two ways so the first way is just dragging this widgets right over here and then adding it onto the screen so this is the first way and the next way in which you could do it is by editing into the xml so this is the design view and this is the text view right here. So for example, if you wanted to add this text view here, so we could type in this code, but it is a bit difficult to write this line of code here. So this is one more way of adding the content to your screen. So we'll prefer this method. That is because it is easy in order to drag and drop the widgets instead of just uh, writing the code for it. And we are also going to study how you could type in the code in order to add widgets to your screen. Now this code right here, which is used in order to add some content to your screen is called as the XML. And if you have a basic idea of HTML, then XML is easier for you to understand. So if you know the basic HTML tags, it would be easy for you to grasp the concepts of the XML. So basically these tags right here, for example, this text view tag is an XML tag, which is used to define a text view. So if you want to add text view, we add this text view tag and in the text view tag, we define the properties of the tag. So for example, this thing right here is used in order to define the width of the layout and there are other certain properties which are specified in order to define our text view. So let's say we want to change the background of this activity by using XML. So in order to change it, we simply go on to this XML file with us. We simply go ahead and go here and we type the code as Android, then give a colon, then type background. And in the color, we specify the color which we want to specify. So in this case, let's say we have the color as, as hash double zero double six double nine, and it is going to change the color for us. So as you could see, when we specify the color in the XML attribute, it is going to change the background color for us and you could change your color according to your preference. So this is one way of writing the code in XML and making changes accordingly. So now if we click design view, you could see that the changes are also reflected in this design view. So now let's say you want to change the color of this text. So if you click on it, you could also change the color by using this component tree right here. So instead of this relative layout, you simply click on the element which you want to select. So for example, this thing right here is the text view, which is named as my application. So we simply click on it and we could then go to properties and select the appropriate color for our text. So as you could see, there is a property which is called as text color. So in order to change color, you simply click on it and you could select the color which you want. So for example, if you want to select the white color, you simply select it and then click OK and it is going to change the color for you. So as you could see, the color of the text has been changed. 
Now one more thing which I wanted to mention in this tutorial is about the Android manifest. So as earlier explained, a uh, Android application is nothing but a collection of a number of activities just like a website as a website is nothing but a collection of a number of web pages. Now in order to manage all these activities we are going to need a file and that file is nothing but is the Android manifest which is present in this manifest folder right over here. So if you click on this arrow you will get a file which is called as the android manifest.xml so if you click on it you will get a basic manifest file which is nothing but a xml file which is used in order to manage all of your activities so for example this main activity right here is included right over here so basically it includes all the activities which we have in our android application and the android manifest will manage all the activities for us so the main purpose of the android manifest is to manage the activities or the android activities and place them in a proper order so for example as you could see the line right here which stands for android.intent.category.launcher so this thing right here specifies that on launching the android application we should have the main activity so in this manner if we go on adding activities to our android application we need to make relative changes to the android manifest.xml so android manifest.xml is basically used to manage activity so that's it for this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning about the different states of your Android activity. Now in the previous tutorial we have gone through the basic overview of activity in which we studied how you could just change the user interface of your activity and we have also studied the two ways in which you could change the user interface. So the first way was the design view or the design way in which you could simply drag and drop the elements onto your activity and then just use the properties in order to change the content of it and the next way was by using the xml code by using the xml tags which allows you to insert any element on your activity screen and you could also change the background color as we have done right over here now in this tutorial what we are going to do is that you are going to leave the user interface apart and we are going to go in much more depth about the activities logic now in this tutorial what we are going to do is that we are going to study the different states of your main activity. So for example if in the previous tutorial we have ignored this code and that is because it is a bit difficult to understand this code for a beginner and in this tutorial what we are going to do is that we are going to go through this code and we are going to understand what some of the code means. So for this tutorial we are going to study the states of an activity. So for example uh, as I've explained in the previous tutorial, this code is the brain of your Android application. So it handles everything, it handles each and every activity and it is also used in order to manipulate the data. So what happens is that this activity right here which we have created which is named as the main activity, it is basically a subclass of a main activity class which contains all the methods which are used in order to run an Android application. Now if you have some basic understanding of Java then it would be easier for you to understand these things. So as I've earlier explained that the main activity or any activity which we are going to create in our Android application is going to be the subclass of the main activity. Now in this case it is typed as public class main activity extends app compact activity. So this thing right here which is the main activity is, in is inheriting some properties from the app compact activity and the thing is that this app compact activity is also a subclass of the most important activity which contains all the methods. So basically we could say that the main activity is indirectly accessing all the properties from the most